Joanna Sanchez, and I am the director of the Western Herbalism Program at the Southwest Institute of Healing Arts here in Tempe, Arizona. And I've come to share with you a plant, a beautiful plant has come uh, to help me share with you some ideas about our curriculum, our school here on site, as well as a little bit about uh, what we learn in the herbalism program by way of some demonstration. So, um, the, as you may know from just the viewing, that we have roses here today. And so the roses have come to us, some of them fresh like these, some of them very fragrant. I know you can't smell them, but that would be our goal is to raise fragrant roses for our medicine gardens. And so some of these, all of these have come from our medicine garden uh, that the students who enroll in the herbalism program, both of our programs, we have two programs, a 100 hour program and a 745 hour program, both of the students enrolled in those programs, one for personal enrichment, one for professional training, will work in our gardens. And so students have grown uh, these plants and harvested these plants and dried the rose blossoms in a beautiful fashion. You can see that uh, the label is here. Uh, it says Rosa. So we learn uh, scientific uh, aspects of the plants when we're studying them. And so Rosa is the Latin name for the rose plant. And it is one of the Rosaceae members. And it's a very important plant family. And most of us uh, know um, roses. Um, you know, they've been seducing humans for thousands of years, the roses. And the rose is all about opening. And so if you can think of a way in your life that that's what you would like to do. Coming to the herbalism program at Suiha really enhances that. We all open ourselves up to the wonderful thing that the nature kingdom is about, uh, and we learn together in, in a community. So I have, as I mentioned, a few things to demonstrate. The roses, there are about 150 different uh, varieties and species of roses. So it's a pretty, pretty large plant family. And some of that is represented in the colors, the sizes, as well as the different aromas that they produce. So, but these are all aromatic, so you just have to take my word for it. And uh, what I've brought uh, to share with you are some of the things that you could do with roses uh, to make them into delivery or preparation for um, taking in or on the body. And so that this is a, by way of example of some of the many, many ways that in the herbalism program we prepare uh, medicines in our pharmacy sections of our curriculum. So the first thing that I would like to share with you is I love to take baths. So I have brought with, with me today some Epsom salts. And so the Epsom salts, so there's a couple of ways that you can do this. And one of the ways that you can do it is to mix the herbs and the plants that you're going to use together. But I like seeing layers. So this is a very, all of these things that I'm bringing to you are very simple. They're the beginnings that students would learn in their introductory curriculum, but they are all very helpful in their simplicity. So, whoop, there we go. So I, I, as I said, I like layers. So I put about half of this beautiful little jar, and it's very nice to have aesthetics with herbalism. You know, nature is beautiful, and then the um, ingredients and the containers and the labeling and all of that that we do. So in this is the hip of a of rose. And so not all roses make a hip. The official rose of the medicine is canina and it makes a hip. And I personally harvested these. So not only do students learn how to grow the medicine plants, they know how to pick them when they're growing in the wild. So I picked this along a beautiful seashore in New England, a big giant uh, rose hip. So I don't have any whole ones to show you, but I cut, clean these and cut them and dry them. So rose hips is very high in vitamin C and it is an antioxidant for the skin. So not only will it be, um, make the water pretty, that pretty water is going to be very good for the quality of our skin. And so, um, well that, that, that would be good. I think I'm going to put some flowers in there too. So these are the petals and those are the hips, the fruit of the of the rose. And 
when I put it into the tub or the foot bath, then the, the um, ingredients, oops, wrong way, the ingredients will uh, blend together. So this is a very good quantity, for instance, for making a foot bath. And so then it would be very soothing to the skin of the feet and the nutrients would be transdermally available up into the skin uh, through the feet. The feet are a very good carrier. So very, very simple. And you could add other herbs if you wanted to, but this is the star of the day is the rose. So that would be a wonderful way to have a soothing 15 minutes for oneself. Also, we can put roses into liquids. And so some of that becomes a little bit more scientific. And we certainly teach all of the mathematics and the chemistry of the plants in our program. So this is an authenticated, more than a quarter of a century program that is tried and true, that teaches uh, students of our school, the Southwest Institute of the Healing Arts, all of the traditions as well as the contemporary science of uh, herbalism. And so herbalism has become quite the uh, viable career. And so it is worth going to school to train to uh, become a, an herbalist. And so this here is what we would call a syrup. So this is roses and the rose hips with another member of the um, rose family called hawthorn. And so this is a very, very good remedy for soothing anxiousness, for um, supporting the opening of the heart, emotionally as well as physically. So we could use roses in um, the process of healing from a broken heart, whether that's emotional uh, sadness and sorrow, or whether that's really physical from something that has been injured through uh, the side effects of a disease, for instance, or perhaps some cardiovascular illness. Now, we don't make claims for cure, but what we do say is the plants can help uh, our bodies in their own innate healing to promote that healing process. So this is, I wish you could taste this as much as I wish you could smell the roses, but this is delightfully sweet because roses have a sweet flavor. I also added a little bit of vegetable glycerin. So this is very safe for children or old folks or people on meds, for instance, who can't take alcohol. And this one is quite nice. Um, this is kind of a fanciful blend and it has roses, cacao, and figs in it. So, and then it has a little bit of an aphrodisiac. So roses are all about sensuality and it is wonderful to awaken our senses so that we can see and touch and smell nature when we're in it. And that helps us uh, choose well when we're picking our plants. So that's one of the things that students learn in the curriculum as well as what's a good quality plant and how to preserve the native populations as well as to harvest medicines that will be uh, sustainable and uh, useful to us. So I get to imbibe on your behalf to your <laughs> help. Yum, roses, chocolate, and figs. Anyway, don't you want to come to school with us already? So this is not something I made. This is from a gal in New Mexico, but she took the rose hips, this one here, the fruit of the rose, and put it into an oil by expressing it. But you can also, so this is very nice, and you kind of squirt it on the skin and put it on the parts that uh, we don't see when we have clothes on and nourish the whole body. Anyway, it's just very nice. It smells of just a scent, the fecutiness of the rose, but you can also take the whole rose and make an oil. And so we call this infused or fixed, and what we're doing is fixing the um, natural chemistry, which we call terpene, so we learn chemistry. The smell of the roses is part of the plant that is medicinal. So what we want to do is track that, and because it has a Terpenes are oils. Sometimes they're used in isolation in aromatherapy, for instance, or essential oils. Some of you might know about that. So these oils are within the context of the whole leaf, but when they get put into fat, they will dissolve. And so the qualities of these leaves will enter into the oil, and then that can be put on the body. So very simple again. 
this, all of the recipes today, but that's where we begin. And sometimes the simplest things are the most healing. So I like putting it nice and full to get the benefit. You could also do fresh. So I have some fresh roses here. Maybe I'll put a few fresh petals in. With gratitude, I take from this beautiful white rose. Yum. Put that in there. And the oils again will uh, transfer into, let's see how thick, more of an orange or salmon. So you get to work with the plants, live and living plants in this way. Where is it? You can see it got very simple again. I shake it up. I'll probably put this outdoors in the light of the moon, in the light of the sun for about two weeks. And it's getting warm here in Arizona, so that'll be plenty of time. And the, the, the nature of the um, rose petals will seep into the oil, and then there'll be a wonderful massaging oil or soothing oil for a wound, like that. The last thing that I brought to share with you today, I made a rose tea. And you can see the beautiful hint of the color from the fruit. And one of the things that I would do with this, if, when my children were young, before I would do my spritzers, is I'd make a big amount of it and I would keep some of the petals in there and I'd pour it into popsicle containers and roses and it was quite delightful for the children to be able to lick until they got to a petal. And then they knew they could eat it and they thought it wasn't that funny. We can <laughs> eat the plants, certainly. Not all plants, but some of them. But so today I just made a small batch because my children are now in their 30s and they're not at home anymore. But the wonderful thing about studying the herbalism is it can become family traditions. So the, the students in the class teach their children, and then uh, that gets passed forward, and that's a wonderful thing. So what I'm going to do here is pour this beautiful enriched uh, rose tea, which is all it is. I just steep it on the stove for about an hour until the color of the petals came into the water, and then I'm going to mix it with, again, vegetable glycerin, like I used in this uh, formula. So vegetable glycerin is totally uh, able for us to um, uh, imbibe, and it's got a natural sweet flavor. And I'm gonna just put a little bit, and the reason I'm putting it is not so much for the sweetness, because this is gonna be a facial mist. I'm putting it in here because it acts like a preservative, so that this doesn't grow mold and it doesn't get stale over time. I'm just gonna add, and normally we would measure this, and I would say five to 10% would be a good preservative quantity. There. Take this because I didn't bring a spoon, but that'll do. And I'm going to pour it in here. And because I have that glycerin in, it'll last a while, so we can make big batches. And many of the folk and cosmetic and medicinal traditional and contemporary things are all part of the education here at Sweet Health. So now I'm going to refresh myself. In a moment, there we go. Mm. You know, and some of the students use the flowers to help with their emotional um, evolvement, if you will. And so what roses are all about, we know they're for the heart. And we know they are antioxidant and protective and uh, help with them. Um, you know, they can be used for anxieties or mild depressions. So if I wanted to really take advantage of this, for instance, I would spray it a few times a day, you know, and I set myself up for being in a loving world, for instance. Mm -hmm. And what a way to be in the world. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. And, we, and nature, <coughs> roses and other plants help us with all of that growing to be the best that we can be. And that's what Sweetha, our school, is all about too. Living our dreams and fulfilling ourselves to the best we can be. So this is just a little smitter smatter about roses, about the school. We are uh, going to have some open houses upcoming pretty soon, so you can check our website. 
the Southwest Institute of Visual and Arts, and we do hope to see you in our classrooms.